Hello everyone. Welcome. I had a little problem um, to the beginning. So there's one that's going to be on there for like three seconds and then it's off. For some reason my camera wasn't working. But welcome to Stampin' Scrapper. I'm so glad you could join me tonight. Um, can you believe how awesome celebration was? Hi Sherry. Um, I want to say, the first thing I want to say to everyone is thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are so awesome. My sales were the best they have been in my six years of doing this, and I tripled my team. Yay! I'm so excited. Thank you so much for your support. I can't tell you how much that means to me. Um, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to talk a little bit to see if we can get some more people to come on here. One thing I want to tell you is, guess what? Stampin' Up! has a new product! Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. How exciting is that? It is Storage by Stampin' Up! And it's available today! Yay! Look how cool this is. I'll start with this picture. Thank you, Sherry! Love you! Um, these are the ink pad and uh, marker holders. Now these come in stacks of five. So this one has two, four, six, eight, ten. So this has two of them there. And then you have two of them over here too. And these will fit the new ink pads. However, hi Kathy! Hi Brittany! Thank you for joining me. Um, these fit the new ink pads. They, the old ink pads do not fit in there. But they will fit in here if you want to stack them up. Now you're going to have a little room because these are, um, I believe, five inches across. Um, you know what? I have the sheet right here. Let me look. Yes, these are five. Here, let me pull it out. I can tell you the measurements of all of them while we talk. Let me move this up so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so the, the um, ink pads are five by five by seven eighths inch. Okay, that must be each little one is seven eighths inches. Is what I'm thinking, like each little slot is because you can take them apart. So if you want to have three here and two over here, you can. You can move these all around. Then the storage blends here, you get five of these trays, and these are the same size, five by five by seven eighths. And these are really nice. They got the little grooves in there for each of your pens. And then this cube here is five by five by four and one sixteenth. So you would have, I think you might even have a little bit of room left here on the side if you put your old style ink pads in there. And then the storage topper, of course, again, is five by five. And this is a one and a quarter inch tall. And I believe it will hold 20 of your Stampin' Ink refills. How awesome is that? Then on top of here, you can see on this one and on this one, they have what's called a storage lid. And um, that is, again, five by five, and then three-eighths thick. Um, I'm just reading comment by Brittany. Yes, for on your desk. Very slim and sleek. It is. I ordered one of each of them today just so I can kind of play with them and see what kind of configuration I want. So I'm excited. I can't wait to get those. And you know what else is on sale today? Woohoo! This pretty grid paper. Oh, isn't it pretty? You get the front house. You can't get a, we can get it, see it up here. And then you got a design down here on the bottom. Oh, I love this. This is also available today to purchase while supplies last. Um, and don't forget, I have, oh, I didn't write it down. I apologize. On my stampinscrapper.com, you will see on the left hand side, we'll have my host code for April. And if you use that, you will get an order $50 or more. You will get a gift from me. You have to use the host code though to get that. So, anyways, back to this. So, we have that. Isn't that pretty? And then, and I have this on my blog too. Here is the configuration chart. So, it gives you, kind of put it up a little bit so you can see it. This gives you all of the measurements, and then you can figure out how many you need and everything. And what's nice about this is you can get a little bit at a time. You don't have to do the whole system at once. That is really nice. And then this is just different examples. Like you could do two um, ink pads and a storage tray, or two ink pads and a lid. Here has the storage 
cube, whoops, let me move it up a little bit, storage cube, ink pad holder, and the uh, storage topper. So just lots of different combinations you can come up with. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with that. Okay, hi Carla! All my besties from Stampin' Up! are on, yay! Okay, today I'm gonna show you three hippity hoppity Easter's on its way. I'm gonna show you three really fun projects that we're gonna do. The first one is, look how cute these are! Okay, these are for the Ghirardelli, of course, Ghirardelli chocolate, yum, 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 yum. This is for the bunnies and the eggs are the two that I used. The blue and pink I thought was appropriate for a boy and girl. So I'm going to show you how to make these super easy lemon, easy peasy lemon squeezy. So we're going to make those two. I'm going to make one of the pink ones. Then this one I'm going to show you. And this one I'm just going to explain it to you a little bit more. But this is the Bugs and Bees. I don't know if you can see that because of the glare. I'm trying to get it. So this is by Lint 2, Bugs and Bees. Can you tell I like their chocolate? Um, these are just adorable. And you get, there's two, um, there's five in the pack. So you'll get another ladybug. But look how cute those are. Let me bring them up. Look at those. Aren't they cute? My daycare kids wanted them. I'm like, mm, sorry, got me in for a class. Can't. Okay. And then this one, I had so much fun creating this for you guys. Look at the little carrot, they come in here, there, and there should be four of them, but I have them out, and you'll see, because I want to show you what I did with this little handle here. Almost looks like an umbrella, doesn't it? But we're going to do that, and I'm going to show you how to make that one. So let's get started, and we're going to get started with these two first. Oops, this goes over here. Okay, so, oh, before I start that, nope, before I do that, I want to do, show you something. Okay, on this one. I did not have any orange ribbon. Try to put this up here so you guys can still see what I'm working on. So we're gonna do that one first. Um, I did not have any orange ribbon. So what do you do? When you need ribbon, I will just try to pop this up because my lights are shining on it. There we go. Ah. But anyways, so here is the ribbon. I really wanted orange for it. I didn't have any orange. Guess what you can do? You can make your own ribbon, colored ribbon. And this is what you're going to do. So I'm using the metallic edge silver ribbon and I'm taking the pumpkin pie dark blends. And what you're going to do is, here I'll put a scrap piece of paper under this, is you're gonna just color it. Use the side, don't use your tip, but use the side of your marker. And the reason I'm doing this now is I wanna let it dry so it's ready to use for my project. But look how cool that is. So you can make any color of ribbon that you want. You don't have to sit there and go, oh, I don't have this ribbon. I wish I had this color. You can make any color you want with our blends. Another useful purpose for our blend markers. How cool is that? So I'm going to send that off to the side. You know what, guys? If you could do me a favor, I'd really appreciate it. If you would share this on your... Um, it's caught your page. I would love it. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you, Carla. Hi, Beth. How are you? Oh, another bestie from Stampin' Up. Yay. I'm so excited you guys are here. Okay, let's get started. We're going to do this one first, right here, that little guy. Okay, so here's our paper. You're going to need two by seven, and we're going to score this at three and a half, four, five and three fourths. And then a scrap piece of paper for our little um, bunny. And the bunny I'm using is from the, A Good Day. Here we go. A Good Day. We're going to use this little guy right here. And then the gold, the gold um, circle I happen to have. And it's one and three eighths circle frame lines. And I'm like, why do I have so many of these in my um, thing, in my bag? And I was like, Oh, remember in Christmas I made that ho, ho, ho with the, um, oh, the little, what were they? I can't think of what they were. The little, they're little truffles. I'm drawing blank at the name right now, what it's called. But um, I had, this was left over from them and it fits perfect. But you can make these on the, um, with the stand, the, 
Now you're in circles. That's it. Goodness, I can't talk today. So let's get ahead, go ahead and get started making these little guys. So we're going to bring out our scoring tool. I'm going to move this stuff a little bit because we got to bring this out. All right. So we want to score. Now remember, this is two by seven, and you want to make it a hair under two because we're going to use our scalloped um, tag topper. So this is cardstock, so we'll use your little um, end, and we're going to score this at three and a half, four, and five and three fourths. Okay. So we'll put this away. All right. Now, when you're folding this, you're going to want to fold it two different ways. So with the two little lines that are in the center, you're going to fold one way. Remember, always use your um, bone folder to burnish when you are doing 3D projects. You want that crisp line. And then you're going to take the top one and you're going to bring it down. And you know what I should have done before I did that? I should have punched it, but we can still punch it. I'm using my scalp top tag topper. And this would have been easier if I had done this before I scored it. See, it's a little trickier to push in, but we can still do it. And then we're going to flip it and do it again. There we go. There's my phrase. There you go. You're going to hear that a lot tonight. You know me. I like to use that phrase. Okay. So here we go. We're going to use one of these. And you're going to use glue dots. I'm telling you guys, this is so easy to make, but so cute. So we're going to put our candy in. So we're going to go. I just put two glue dots on the back because that way it just secures it a little bit, but it's not a whole lot. Hi! Why? Wine? Wine Ann? Am I saying it right? If I messed it up, I'm so sorry. I hope I said your name correctly. Thank you for joining me tonight. Okay, so it's going to fold up like this. But the ribbon that I'm using is, and I did not pull this out of, I thought I had it out, which one it is. Oh, where did this ribbon go? Oh, here it is. I had it in the wrong bucket. This is the Whisper White Classic Weave Ribbon. It's in the annual catalog. It was in the wrong bucket. And I have 11 inches of this. So what I'm going to do is get my glue dots out again. Where's my take my pick tool? Got to use my pick, take my pick tool for this. So I'm going to bring this up. And I'm going to put a glue dot right here on that tip, because that's going to help hold the ribbon down. And then I'm going to wrap the ribbon around this. And I just kind of put it in position. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I try to make it even on my ends so that it'll be easier to tie. And so, okay, so I want it about right there. So I'm just going to bring this back over again, and I'm going to put two glue dots right here. Whoops, it didn't stick. And right here. And this is going to help hold the ribbon in place. Bring it back over. And I'm lining it up with the score line there. And then I'm going to bring it back over, and I'm going to flip it over. And I like to... Just to help secure it on the back, I only put one in the middle, but it's just to help keep it in place, especially when you're going to tie the knot. It helps a little bit keep it more where you want it. There we go. And then we're going to tip it back over and press this down. And we have a glue dot there. So it's holding this right in place where we want it. So you're just going to tie a knot. You can tie a bow if you want to. Um, this ribbon was a little thicker with the bow. I just didn't care for the looks of it, but you do what you want. It's your project. So I'm just going to tie a knot here. It's going to let me. Whoops, I'm too far down. Sorry. I'm trying to get better about looking at um, comments. So that's if you see my arms stretching out, that's why. Okay, we're going to trim our ribbon. Okay, so we have that made. Like I said, how easy is that? Yay! 
a ribbon cooperate with me tonight okay so now let's do our bunny okay remember I'm using the bunny from the a good day stamp set I'm going to stamp him in memento ink because I want to use my blends with them so remember when you're using the blends you want to use memento ink if you use a Stampin' Up, Stampin' Right markers, you want to use the stays on ink unless you have this really dry, then you can use the Memento ink. But like I said, it needs to be really dry. We're gonna stamp a second one just in case I make a mistake, which is definitely possible today. It has been one of those Mondays. Okay, I'll grab my lovely Stampin' chamois isn't this awesome i love it and of course my pretty paper that i cover it up so i don't have to look at it because you guys know me my ocd-ness can't stand looking at it dirty okay one thing i did is oh that was for the i'm like for the blue one you will see here for the little blue ribbon a bowl i use the balmy blue dark but today we're going to use the pink so i am going to use for his little ears the light flirty flamingo and I hope you guys can see this while I'm doing this I'm just putting a little bit of pink is all I put on that just so that it has a little bit of color now I'm going to come in with my dark smoky slate and I'm going to put this up here so you can see what I'm doing I'm just putting a little bit of gray on here a little bit on his whiskers just for shading I'm not putting a whole lot then I'm going to come in with my light smoky slate so these are the colors that I'm using I'll put them up here so you can see them I'll be using this one in a minute and I'm just using the light and I'm just blending and by blending over that pink it's really nice because you get a hint of pink but it doesn't come through real strong which is what I wanted so you just keep blending around why is it so much easier to color when you're not on camera i had no problem coloring this and everything turned out perfect until you're on camera and then it's like oh don't like where i did that okay actually he's turned out pretty cute you could make him a brown bunny if you want to okay then I use because we don't have this is berry burst. We do not have berry burst in our stamp up blend. So I am using the dark, lovely lipstick, and it's really close. Whoops, wrong end. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just painting or coloring his bow or her bow because we're going to make it a little girl for pink. Okay, now I know my memento is really dark or dry, so I'm good to go, but I'm coming in with a Stampin' Right marker and I'm just putting a dot on his nose so it's darker. So this is what he looks like, on my camera focus, when he's all done. How cute is he? But look at that little tail. I got a little trick on what I'm gonna do with that tail, but let's punch him out because that's the last thing I do. I am using the one and a quarter inch punch. Punch this little cutie patootie out. Oh, there we go. Okay, then we're going to use our snail adhesive. Put him on our gold circle. Then I'm going to use a stamping dimensional on the back. And I just used one. You don't need a lot for this little guy. Let me put it in here. And then, of course, we have to have a glitterly fuzzy tail. So I use some stamping, I mean, um, Wink Stella on his tail. And there you go. And that is how easy it is to make this little treat holder. And this color is Pacific Point for the boy, for the bunny, and the egg is done in Berry Burst. I will have all the measurements, everything on my blog on Wednesday to go with all of these projects. Hi, Joyce! You're right, Sherry. It's because you're looking at you. I'm, I'm like, ah, 
So, okay, so done with that project. Like I said, how easy was that project? Let me take care of that stuff now. I'm going to show you. I'm not going to make this one because, like I said, it is super easy. I'm just going to explain to you what I made and what products I used. So, for this one, my little bugs and bees. It's glary. I'm trying not to let it glare, but they're my little bugs and bees. I made the topper is two inches, two and a quarter by four, and I scored it at two inches. And this is uh, melon, not melon mambo. I got melon mambo on my brain. This is daffodil delight at one and seven eighths by two and eight. The sentiment came from Beauty Abounds right here, just or for you. This is in our occasions catalog. The little bee is from the detailed dragonfly framelits, and this is what it looks like. Just a little bee, isn't that cute? And I stamped it with um, Memento ink, and I used our two by eight inch bags. And four of them fit in there, perfect, folded over, and you can put your topper, and there you go. Another easy peasy lemon squeezy. Actually, my daycare kids have all asked if I would get those for them to put in their Easter bags, because they know I make them Easter bags every year. Okay, are you guys ready for our next project? I'm so excited about this one. I had a lot of fun creating this box today for you guys. So here's our little box. Isn't that cute? Okay, now these come in this box and they come with this on here. They almost look like a little umbrella, don't they? But I didn't want that on there because it wouldn't fit in my box. So I just took my wire cutters and I just, that's easy. That's how easy it is. To cut it off take those wire cutters and get it off because I did not want them in my box awesome okay so we're gonna move that off to the side and let's get creating with our paper okay so for this let me set this off to the side so you guys can see for this one you're gonna use a piece of paper at five and a half by eight inches now I use the thick whisper white because I wanted to make sure that um, it was sturdy. I wanted it really sturdy. Oh, I'm glad you like the carrot um, top um, box. Okay, so we're gonna take our paper and on our eight inch side, so I'm gonna get my cheat sheet up here. We're gonna score, again, this is cardstock, so use your little topper. We're gonna score at one inch, three and a half inches, four and a half inches and seven inches. You're gonna turn it on the five and a half inch side. Oh, I grabbed the wrong piece, hold on. That's a five and a quarter, wrong size. Ah, oh, guess what? I bet I didn't cut these down. I didn't. Okay, hold on, start over, rewind. Think that I'm just doing this for the first time. We're just gonna rewind a little bit. Let me tell you. Okay, for this pig project, you're gonna cut your paper at five and a half, which this is already cut at, and you're gonna cut it at eight inches, not five and a quarter like that one was. So I gotta cut off half an inch here. All right. It's not a Facebook Live without a little bit of boo-boo, and it is there. Okay, can you tell I talk, I deal with kids? I'm talking baby talk, boo-boo. Okay, let's try this again. On our eight inch side, we are going to score at one inch, three and a half, four and a half, and seven inches. And then we're gonna turn it on a five and a half inch side, and we're gonna score at one, and four and a half. I'm glad I figured that out before I started making the project. Okay, so we're gonna put that away. Okay, now we are going to cut out our little um, opening here. The first thing you want to do is cut out the opening. We are going to be using the frame stitch, rectangle stitched framelits. They are also in the occasions catalog. And so we're going to go ahead and use this one. Let me bring out my big shot. Okay. Well, there we go. Okay. So again, I use my magnetic platform. 
and these are both the same size so it doesn't matter which one you use but you use one of them and you're going to take your framelit and you're going to center it now your sides are going to be see your sides are skinnier than the than the top and the bottom and that's okay because it's a rectangle so it's not supposed to be even okay, we're going to go ahead and cut that Sorry if that made my camera move. Okay, and that is all we need to use our Big Shot for today. So we're done with that. Get that out of the way. Now, I this little piece is nice. You can put some kind of sentiment on there and use it for another card. So don't throw that away. That's perfect to use again. Okay, so now we're going to stamp our butter our bunnies. And I'm using the same bunny that I did on the other one. I thought I had ordered the other set that's in the occasions catalog, but I didn't. So I have one bunny to use. And what I want to show you a couple tricks on stamping this. All right. So this is going to be the front of our box. So this is going to be, I don't know if you can see my score lines, but this is going to be the top here. This is your front flap your side flaps, your bottom of your box, the bottom, this part, the front right here, this part right here. So if you see, I have my bunnies going the right way. So when you open it up, they're all going the right direction. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I always start at the front here. So I want a bunny, let's see if I put this here so you can see it. I want a bunny on each of my front corners. So I'm going to stamp him, make sure he's going the right direction. And I am using, I believe this is Smoky Slate ink. So I put one on each side. And yes, it's going to get folded. See, he's kind of folded over a little bit, but that's okay. And then I'm just going to keep coming down this direction. And again, I'm keeping them all pretty much the same direction because I want them looking at you. You know, I don't want them... You can do them whatever you want. This is just something I did. I even did the flaps. I probably don't need to, but I did them anyway. Now, this is going to be your sides here. So this is where I switched and I started doing them like this. Now this one, I did a little bit on like that because again, this is on the top still. You're gonna see most of him on the top. Okay, so this is a side. So again, we're going to go stamping it this direction. Let's kind of angle him a little bit. And you can put as many or as few as you want. Now, when I did this one, because I wanted him to go that way, and plus, no offense, I didn't want his little dupa sticking out there. So I did go ahead and I flipped him this way. Let's see where it is. Oops, here. I'm going to flip it because it's easier to see what directions I want to go. So I turn this around. So my opening is now up at the top. Hi, Valerie. Thank you for joining. Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Okay, these are tabs, so we really don't care about the tabs. They can go, and you don't even have to do the tabs if you don't want to. Okay, so now this is the bottom of your box. So we don't really have to do... See in the bottom, I didn't really do a whole lot on the bottom. But my sides again, so if this is the bottom, right now we're working on these sides right here. We're working on this side and this side and this side because the bottom we don't was right here. So this is our three, these are our three sides. So again, I'm going to turn, let me think this through again. This is going to be my bottom, so they're going to come up. Yeah, so they're going to come up. So I want the bunnies to go the other direction. I want the bunnies this time to go this direction so that when you're looking at the box, you're going to see that the bunnies are going the right way. So I hope I did that right. Yes, because they're going to come up. Okay. All right. Same thing with this one now. So this is going to be our bottom flap here. So I'm going to want to flip, or flip it or do it upside down. But that's my flap. They're going to see it. So these sides are going up. This one's going up. 
So I want the bunnies to be going this direction on here. And like I said, you don't have to do your flaps, but I do. There. Okay, so there's the stamping is done for that little guy. Okay. And I need my chamois. Clean it off quick. Okay. So we're done with stamping. Now... What for me, it is easier for me to cut before I score, uh, burnish them. But would you do whatever it works for you? But we're just going to cut up on the tabs. And when I cut the tabs, I'm going to cut them just a little bit at an angle because that way they will fold in a little bit nicer for you. I hope everyone is having a great Monday. Mine was a little crazy. I hadn't had the kids before, you know, the weekend and Thursday and Friday because I got that lovely stomach bug. But thank goodness I am feeling much better. Okay, two more. Oh, I got to tell you a funny story. When I was doing this box, when I was making this, this afternoon, one of my little ones wanted to help me, and I had stamped the bunnies, and I was cutting the tabs, and she thought I was killing the bunnies. Don't cut the bunnies. They're going to cry. I'm like, honey, they're on paper. They're not real. They're going to cry. No, they're not real. Oh, do you mean they're fiction? Oh, my gosh. I started laughing. It was so funny. She was so cute. Okay, so now, oh, no, before I do that, I want to go ahead and add my tear and tape. Again, to me, this is easier to do before I start scoring it. But you're going to add this to each of the six tabs. Like I said, see, you don't really need to do the tabs because you're going to cover them up. But it just makes me feel better that I did. No one's going to see it, but I know it's done. So who else is excited about that storage system? Can't wait till mine come in so I can see them um, and play with them a little bit and figure out exactly what I want. Oh, and I wanted to tell you guys, my, um, my Stamping Retreat, my first holiday ever, Holiday Extravaganza by Stampin' Scrapper is going to be October 5th, and it's going to be here in the Dayton, Ohio area, and I am going to have, it'll be open to customers and downline first, and then I will open it up to public, so if you want to come, place an order with me, and you can get on the list, it is going to be October 5th, and we are going to stamp all day long. I'm so excited. I got ideas already going in my head for that day. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and remember I use the tweezers. Oh, I forgot to show you. If anyone was new, I just assume you guys have seen it, and that's not right, is it? What I did with my tear and tape is I hold it through in my hand like this, and then I have better control over it by going it like this. And then what I do is... I take an old gift card, Amazon, gotta love it, Amazon, and I push it down and rip it, and that way I get a straight line each time, because you know me, if it doesn't look nice, I know it's even tape, it drives me nuts. So then you're gonna take all of these off, and I have to tell you one thing to watch for, and because I did it my first time, I was doing this, I had to take my box apart just a little bit to fix it. But when I was putting the tabs on, I made my bottom my top. I'm like, oh no, I don't think that will work. There we go. 
Okay, so, oh my gosh, I never burnished these. Okay, you know what you do when you do that? You take out your silicone craft sheet. I have two of them here, because this is a little on. You take out your silicone craft sheets, and you put it on here, because nothing's gonna stick to it, see? Comes right off. When you do something like this, I totally, oh, let me turn this, I totally forgot to burnish my sides before I took that tape off. So I'm gonna do it this way so that it doesn't stick to anything. It's a little bit harder on the tabs because it has tape on it already, but it will, we can still do it. Okay, and then we're gonna do these. We don't have to worry about it because it's not going to stick to anything because we're using the silicone craft sheets, which are wonderful. And one thing I really like these for, definitely in my card making, but I really like these for my glue gun. So I don't, when I'm all done, I just peel off the glue and away I go. It's wonderful. Okay, so now we're not going to do that to put it together yet. See, you know what? I have a list here about the order I'm supposed to go in, and I totally forgot to do that. Okay, where is my window sheet? Here we go. Okay, so on the top here, I put a window sheet, and I cut the window sheet at three and a quarter by two, and I found that liquid glue is the best to put on here, and you don't want to put a lot. You just want to put a little bit on, and you're going to do, you're going to put this on on the inside of the box, the glue, and then you're gonna put this in. And you just press it down. Voila, there we go. Now let's put our box, our box together. So, oh, I guess we're not, come back here. I did not let that sit long enough, did I? Okay, let's reattach her. Okay. There. Now it should be a little bit, a little bit on there. Okay. Okay. I got a little bit of glue by having moved it, but I can take a wipe afterwards, a baby wipe, and that will come right off. So we're going to make the bottom, you want to make the bottom of your box first. So you're going to just put your tabs in, line up your corners. And this way you know now that's the bottom of your box. Oops, come on, stick in there. Here, I'm trying to see it better than I got right up in the, you guys are definitely getting up close on this. See me do this, huh? Okay. And there we go. And there is the little box. How cute is that? Okay, now on this one, do you see the grass inside here? Well, I learned this trick from Angie Judah. Uh, she's Chicken Scratch is her blog name. I learned this trick from her long time ago. She just has an, a little mini paper shredder, this little guy. I got this on Amazon and it works perfect. So I put it through, I put garden green and um, granny apple green through it and then it came out in strips and then you just take it and you squish it. You just put it in and out and you just put it in you don't need a whole lot, but this will make your grass, and you know what this is great for? You know all those little scraps of paper you have? That's what I use. This is all scrap paper, and I just threw it in there, and it worked perfectly. So that looks like good, and then you're going to take your um, carrot, and you're going to lay him in here. 
Then you close your box. Get them all tucked in there. Oh, I gotta put this. So it's, what I'm trying to do is get the little carrot top here down a little bit. And sometimes you have to squish your grass a little bit if it's too high. And there we go. And there's your carrot. How cute is that? Okay, so now our ribbon is dry. It's all nice and dry, so you can make a bow. And oops, make this. I think I made it a little bit smaller. Yep, I did. So we're going to use our bow maker. I love this bow maker. I know you can get them online. I was able to get this one from my upline. She had a friend that made them, and I love them. So you take out your bow, whoops, fix the tails like that. Now you have a perfect bow. And I'm going to take a glue dot. Just put that there and add it to the corner. And then take scissors, using my ribbon scissors. My family knows you don't touch them. And there you go. How cute is that? I love this little box. And you know what? I think this little box is going to get made more and more. And not just for Easter, but you can do so many things with this. You could use it for Christmas, Halloween, birthday. So many different things you could do with this box. So there are the two of those. So let me bring out my projects again. So we have this. I got to have to put this kind of towards the bottom so it doesn't glare. Our two bunnies. And where did I do? Oh my goodness, where did I put my... I bet I put it, here it is, it's on the bottom, and there you go. And there's our projects for today. Hi, Patty, thank you for joining. I hope you enjoyed this um, today and you like these projects. Don't forget to sh please share this on your page, and have a great night, and thank you for stopping in. Love you. There you go.